Okay, in this tutorial, we'll just take another look at the rigid body dynamics built into version 2.66. Uh, nothing in particularly special about the rigid body dynamics. It's more about how to build an array of cubes like this. And it's, it's slightly tricky if you're not familiar with it. When we're going to use the array modifier. It just the array modifier by itself isn't going to cut it. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I've posted this tutorial before somewhere in the past, but I have over 300 tutorials, so perhaps you don't know it. And so I'm just going to move this plane out of the way right here. And I think I'm just going to go into here and get rid of these, start from scratch. Okay. All right, I must have gotten rid of a light too, so I'll put a light back in the scene. All right, that's good enough for starters. All right, so now let's go get another, let's go put a cube in the scene. Like this. I'll scale it down. I'll go into edit mode and scale it down a little bit. I'll go give it a color. Go get that other green color because it matches well. Against here. All right, there is it in the scene. So it, for the rigid body dynamics, in case you haven't seen those two videos, you just grab the toolbar over here. And let me see, where is it in? It must be up here, right down here. You'll have a tab like this, rigid body tools. So with that highlighted, I'll just press add active. And with this highlighted, I'll press add passive. Okay, so that's all that's required for the rigid body dynamics. Just zooming in there with the DEL key. All right, and so when I press alt A, it falls down and hits the ground like that okay so but now I want to use the array modifier to make multiple instances of it and I'm going to show you the trick that you might not know you add the modifier you add an array modifier well what we want to do is I want to I don't want them right connected to each other I want to at least separate them I'll just separate them a little bit like that it doesn't as long as they're separated and maybe we'll put in you know, 10 of them in this direction like this. All right. So if we do, if we try and do both directions at the same time, it's not going to work. So I put those in there and I apply it. All right. And then I'll just get the array modifier again. But in this time, I'll turn this to zero and I'll turn this to 1.1. And then I'll add 10 of those. like that. All right, they're growing already. And I'll apply that one. And then I'll do it again. This is a lot easier than just, you know, try and grab them separately. And in this case, I'll type in 1.1 as well for the same amount of offset. And I'll get 10 of those. All right, so that's good for starters. You go, oh, okay, that's easy, right? So, um, but we're not done yet. Nope. So I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to apply that too as well. Let me look around on the other side. So there's the whole thing. And now it's, notice it's a single object. That's an object and that's an object like this. So, in fact, I'm just going to scale this down. I'll go into edit mode and scale it down. And you'll see it just scales like a regular object because that's all it is is a single object. I move it down a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit see, like this. And then if I run it, there's all these cubes like there. And I press Alt A and you'll see it'll fall down like that. But it's only bouncing on that one cube and something's not happening right. And that's because its origin is down here, right? So let me move this up a little bit. Press Alt A. The origin moved when I scale this. So something doesn't quite roll. And I want it to be a bunch of cubes anyway. Okay, so what I need to do is go into edit mode like this and it, everything's selected and the reason I left a space in between here is I want to separate these out into their own objects so I'm going to press P and when this comes up a lot of times I've used separate by selection you've seen that before I'm sure but I'm going to separate by loose parts meaning they're not connected to each other so it takes a moment to do it so now they're individual objects so I can verify that when I leave edit mode and I go grab each one. And since I had set the active in advance, they all have this active set in here. Well, we're almost done, but we're still actually not quite done. And then I'm going to press Alt A. 
and let it drop and there it hits the ground but now notice the way it's you know falling through the ground like this it doesn't seem quite right all right and that's because we the last thing we have to do is we need to change the origins for each one this is the origin for each one of those objects like that so I'll go into wireframe mode press B for the, my bounding box and I'll grab all of them like this alright so I'll just go back into here so now I know I have them all selected and then I can come down to my object transform and I can put my origin to the geometry and then when I do that now each cube has its own individual origin back at its own center like this and now we're good to go so now when we press all day it drops and it collapses like it should like that alright so it's a little trick and if you're new to blender it's likely you haven't run across it right at the outset and that's it for this lesson alright and I'll see you in the next video